that are on the uh, at the end of the melody above. So you're going to start on, we'll just do it. It'll be easier to explain it this way. So this is going to start on A. So we have A. Give me an A. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Happy are they who have not walked in the council. And then we hit the hash mark. We're going to go down to G of, up to B flat. No. And then back to A. Ooh, wicked. And then we're going to go to the second half. Nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats. There's the hash mark. We're going to go down GFD of the scornful. And then we just go back and forth between those two things. If the, the trick with this, you stay on the first note no matter how many words are there until you get to the hash mark. So it can be an entire paragraph and you just want to keep going until you hit the hash mark, okay? Um, well, if this is new, you'll get the hang of it eventually, uh, and it should be a new way to do psalms for us for a little bit. All right, so I invite you to stand. Let's begin with the rite of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, our Maker and Redeemer, this is your world, and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. Dear beloved, God loved this world so much he sent Christ the Son to be our Savior. In Christ, God forgives you all of your sins so that you may live in the power of the Holy Spirit this day and always. Amen. Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man. Truly I love Thee, truly I'd serve Thee, light of my soul my joy, my crown. Fair are the meadows, fair are the woodlands, robed in flowers of blooming spring. Jesus is fairer, Jesus is pure, he makes my sorrowing spirit sing. Fair is the sunshine, fair is the moonlight, bright the spark clearing stars on high. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels in the sky. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man. 
glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and voices raised tell everyone what God has done may all who seek the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name send us with your promises O God and lead us forth in joy with his shouts of thanksgiving alleluia let's do that again Thankful hearts and voices raise Tell everyone what God has done May all who seek the Lord rejoice And bear Christ's holy name Feed us with your promises, O God And lead us forth in joy With his shouts of thanksgiving Alleluia Let us pray. Direct us, O Lord God, in all of our doings with your continual help, that all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15 to 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Happy are they wanting on the camp nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do, do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The second reading is from Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we, do, we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I had become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent, in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but as more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord? So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. One thing more. Prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping through your prayers to be restored to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. 
Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Listen, listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy Listen, listen, God is calling Through the word inviting Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy Listen This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's estimated that about one in four Americans is estranged from someone in their family right now. Four in ten have been at some point. And even if you aren't capital E estranged from someone, we know what it feels like to have strained relationships in our families and social circles. Some of us can't talk without fighting. Others try to avoid talking at all. And sometimes we just let the lawyers do the talking. It's worth keeping that in mind when we hear the words of Jesus in today's gospel reading. Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. It's easy to read those as a prescriptive endorsement, as if Jesus is saying that if you want to be his disciple, you need to start hating people. As if the way into the kingdom of God is by blowing up all of your relationships, particularly those with the people you're closest to. Come, follow me, says our Lord, and I will make you burners of bridges. The meaning changes when we see them not as proscriptive, but as descriptive. Not Jesus telling us how we should be, but Jesus describing how we actually are in our relationships with our families, our neighbors, and our communities. The word that Jesus uses for hate here has notions of separation or removal. We often have the sense that our relationships with others aren't quite the way they should be. There are tears in the fabric, and those tears are a source of pain for us. And to stay in the text, we may even feel the same way about life itself. There is one individual I know of who wakes up every morning convinced it's going to be a fantastic day, and they can't wait to experience every single minute of what this day has to offer. And that is my dog. And the rest of us feel a little more ambivalent. People ask us how we're doing, and we say, we're fine. Fine means lonely, anxious, grieving, frustrated, nervous, burned out, or all of the above. Even if we don't hate our lives, it's hard to shake the feeling they're not exactly what we had in mind. Even if the fabric isn't torn, it's still pretty threadbare in some places. And there's an idea that you hear in church circles from time to time that those kinds of breaches aren't appropriate for disciples of Jesus. 
After all, our lives are supposed to proclaim the gospel, and so they must be pretty darn perfect. The homes of Christians should have white picket fences, 2.1 children, and a crowded table at Thanksgiving every year. Their careers will rocket to success, and they'll still have time to shovel their neighbor's driveway without breaking a sweat. And most important, they'll be relentlessly happy every single minute of the day. And when people come up to them on the street and say, how did your life get so perfect? They'll say, well, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. If that idea is in your head somewhere, I want you to take a magic eraser and scrub it out and get rid of it. Because Jesus says the exact opposite of that. Not that if you want to be my disciple, you need to have life figured out. You need to have the perfect family, the perfect home, the perfect career, the perfect attitude. No, Jesus says that if you are someone who feels the pain of living, the grief of loss, the pain of estrangement, you can be my disciple. To be a disciple of Jesus, you only need to desire to rend the breaches in the world. And if you're someone who knows pain and loss and grief and confusion, you are someone who can follow Jesus into the world to bear its burdens and heal its wounds. Jesus knows what it feels like to carry those burdens. Does Jesus have a perfect relationship with his family? No. It's complicated. They argue about whether his ministry is a good thing or a bad thing. Does Jesus have a good reputation in his hometown? No. He gets kicked out when he goes home. Does Jesus have a perfect sense of calling in his life? No. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus says, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours. So Jesus knows what it means to grieve and lament and be frustrated by life. So instead of saying that we need to get our lives to a certain place before we can follow Jesus, Jesus comes to us and meets us where we are. This is, in a sense, what the gospel is all about. It is not that if you follow Jesus, you are going to be fantastically successful. It's not that you're going to be the envy of your neighbor and peers. It's not even that it's going to make you all that happy. It's simply that because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we never experience life alone. Wherever there's loss and death and pain, God is already there. So whenever we carry our cross, Jesus always carries it with us. And the way that we redeem our grief is not by avoiding it, everything's fine, or allowing it to make us exceptional, no one understands what I'm going through, but by using it to understand the pain and suffering of those around us, to listen to their disappointments, their stresses, their laments, and see them as shared wounds in the body of Christ. We could say that Jesus carries our cross so that we can carry our neighbor's cross. This idea is, to put it mildly, counterintuitive. It is for us today, and it was for Jesus' first disciples. Sure enough, the decades after this text was written, people started criticizing the first Christians, saying that they were atheists, that they didn't actually believe in God. That criticism seems weird at first. How could anybody think they were atheists? But people thought that they didn't believe in God because they didn't build a temple or a shrine or a sanctuary somewhere. They didn't go on pilgrimages to some special place. And so people looked at them and said, well, since they don't go anywhere to be close to God, they must not actually believe in God. As we know, and as Jesus reminds us in today's gospel reading, It's actually just the opposite. They didn't go on pilgrimages because God didn't happen somewhere else. God happens here. In places like this, in times like these, and in lives like ours. Whenever we think that we need to get away to get closer to God, away from our grief, away from our pain, away from our lives, we're forgetting that Christ is already here in our grief and joy, in our successes and problems, in our life and in our death, 
the body of Christ is given for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to the lake shore seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy but only asking for me to follow sweet Lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling you called out my name on the sand I have abandoned my small boat now with you I will seek other seas you know for well what I have Lord neither treasure no weapons for conquest just these my fish nets and will for working sweet Lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling you called out my name on the sand I have abandoned my small boat now with you I will seek other seas you need my hands my exhaustion working love for the rest of the week a love that's willing to go on loving sweet Lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling you've called up my name on the sand I have abandoned my small boat now with you I will seek other seas. You who have fished other waters, you the longing of souls that are yearning, a loving friend, you have come to call me, sweet Lord. You have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling. You've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. Let's join the church around the world confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. As the scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in the faith. God of grace, hear our prayer for the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forests, for all that will yield fruit this season, and for streams and other bodies of water. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. For the nations and those in authority, for the elected leaders of our towns, states, and country, and for international organizations, grant wisdom to those who govern and raise up citizens who make decisions in the best interests of their neighbors. We pray especially this week for the people of Benin, the Côte d'Ivoire, and Tongo, Togo. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. For all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care. At this time, if you have any petitions you would like to say out loud or in your heart. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended in you, that they glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into their many vocations for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Keep us in communion with all the saints until we, at last, find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer these prayers in the name of the one who is full of compassion and mercy, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather harvest from the seed that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide food for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, 
holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, God. Let's do that one more time. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us in your path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servants to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free the earth from the bondage of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Send your spirit on these gifts in the hearts of all who share this bread and cup. Send us into the world to serve with courage and wisdom. Come, spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. gather gladly holy manna is our bread come from wilderness and wandering here in truth we will be fed you that yearn for days of fullness all around us is our food taste and see the grace eternal taste and see that god is good all who, who hunger, never strangers, seeker be a welcome guest. 
Come from restlessness and roaming Here in joy we keep the feast Ye that once were lost and scattered In communion's love have stood Taste and see the grace eternal Taste and see that God is good all who hunger sing together jesus is a living bread come from loneliness and longing here in peace we have been fed blessed are those who from this table live their days in gratitude Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the announcements. Does anyone have any announcements they want to share? Yeah, Matt. All right, thank you. We have coffee and stuff. It's just right outside in the sort of sitting area out there. Everyone's invited. Uh, next weekend, do you, do you ever see the character Stefan on SNL? And he used to describe things, and he'd say, it's got, it's got everything, right? Ne next weekend has got everything. Uh, Saturday, we have Wyckoff Day, which is from 11 to 4. Uh, that's at the Wyckoff Y. You're invited to come uh, work our table for a bit, talk about Advent. At 5 o'clock, we have worship. We have a baptism next Saturday at 5. Sunday, we'll have worship at 9.30, and then it's God's work, Our Hands Sunday. So we'll have, uh, we're putting together care kits for St. Matthew Trinity at like 10.30-ish. You can write letters to your representative about uh, Lutheran immigration advocacy stuff, and then we'll have godly play at like 10.45-ish. So we have a full weekend next week, so I invite you to come through for that. Uh, do what you're able to. Should be fun. All right. Uh, why don't we stand? Why don't you do the blessing? Let's stand for the blessing. Sorry, I got a million things up here, and I'm trying to keep my stuff straight. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go, my children, with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever. Go, my children, with my blessing, you are my own. Go, my children, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. Here you learn how much I love you, what I can cure. Here you heard my dear son's story, 
here you touched him, saw his glory. Go, my children, winds forgiven at peace and pure. <clears throat> my children, fed and nourished, closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving, joyful and free. Hear my spirit's power filled you. Hear my tender comfort stilled you. Go, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Go in peace, remember the vulnerable. Thanks be to God.